Hello, everyone. Uh, I hope uh, you are able to hear me. Yes. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Uh, I welcome you all to Decoding Diet for a Healthier Life. I'm Athar, a proud member of the Nyan Prabhupada Foundation's Ibrita project, and I'm thrilled to kick off tonight's session. Before we jump into the heart of our topic, let me take a moment to introduce the incredible organization behind this initiative. Uh, the Dnyan Prabhudini Foundation, or JPF for short, was founded in 2019, uniting Dnyan Prabhudini alumni and associates worldwide with the noble vision of giving back to the community. This non-profit organization operates with values deeply rooted in its parent organization's ethos. JPF focuses on three key pillars, rural development, education, and women's empowerment. In the span of three and a half years, JPF has grown exponentially with over 750 individuals spread across 12 regional chapters in the US, Europe, and India. The driving force behind our impact is our dedicated team of more than 200 volunteers who work tirelessly to fulfill our mission and vision. One of the JPF's flagship projects is Ibreta, which is designed to bridge the gap between researchers, medical experts, and the gen general public. It acts as a dynamic platform fostering communication and collaboration. This initiative covers four crucial aspects, research, education, training, and of course, awareness. Recently, we hosted an informative series of training sessions focused on menstrual health. If you are interested in watching these sessions or exploring more content from Nyan Prabhudini Foundation, you can find it on our YouTube channel, where we are also going live right now. Under the broader umbrella of awareness, we have curated a series of informative sessions known as Health Katta. Tonight marks the fifth installment of this enlightening series, and we are thrilled to have you join us. Today, we have the privilege of hearing from Shilpa Zoshi, a renowned dietitian and diabetes educator with over 20 years of experience. She is a trailblazer in a field specializing in diverse areas such as weight management, diabetes, PCOS, gastrointestinal issues, renal care, pregnancy care, cancer nutrition, and more. Her leadership is evident as the director of Mumbai Diet and Health Center. Vice President of the Indian Dietetic Association and Honorary Secretary of the All India Association of Advancing Research in Obesity. She has published over 15 papers in peer-reviewed medical journals and trained over 3,000 diabetes educators as a course director for the National Diabetes Educators Program. Recognized for her contributions, she was awarded v for 3 Award in 2018 and she was also a runner-up for the Wim Feimer Guggenheim International Essay Award in 2017. She has an international presence, presenting at various meetings, including the American Diabetes Association and International Diabetes Federation. Her, her journey is a testament to her passion for health and wellness. With that said, let's give a warm welcome to Shilpa Ma'am. Please save your questions for the Q&A session. Um. Thank you so much, Atharva, for a warm welcome. Can I uh, share my presentation now? Yeah, thank you. Yes. Can you see it? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and uh, I'm audible, right? Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Nyan Prabodhini Foundation for having me here. Uh, thank you so much, Atharva, for warm words of uh, introduction. Uh, and today we are going to talk about decoding diet for healthier life. So, you know, um, uh, while I take you through my presentation, um, one has to understand that this is a very important month in world of health because this is the diabetes month. And diabetes awareness is something which is very, very important. This month is celebrated as Diabetes Month because it it is a birthday of Frederick Best, who, along with Dr. Banting, discovered insulin. So therefore, this is a very important month. Now, if we talk about diet, who was the first modern nutritionist of the world? So it was Mahatma Gandhi, where he has said that it is the health that is the real wealth and not pieces of gold and silver. And post-COVID, I think 
all of us have understood what he has said because post covid we have seen that you know me we were having the wealth and we were having everything but we were sitting at home just to look after our health so it is really health which is very very important now what is positive health okay so hippocrates who is called as father of modern medicine actually said that positive health requires knowledge of man's primary constitution that is what we call today as genetics and power of various foods both natural to them and those resulting from human skills what we call today as processed foods okay but eating alone is not enough for good health there must also be exercise okay and combination of these two things will make the regime with proper attention given to the season of year changes of wind age of the individual and situation of his own if there is any deficiency in food or exercise the body will fall sick it is such a beautiful a uh, powerful set of statements which hold true even today and this is exactly why we fall ill so it is not just what the food that we choose it's also the exercise we do how we choose how we process which is very very important so if you look at nutrition what is nutrition so nutrition is a biochemical or physiological process by which organism uses food to support life okay this is coming from wikipedia but if you are going from medicine net or you are going from webster dictionary then it is process of taking in food using it for growth metabolism and repair and what webster dictionary says that act or process of nourishing or being nourished specifically the sum process by which animal or plant takes in food and utilizes the substances so ultimately what is nutrition is what you consume and how you utilize it how you metabolize it and therefore causing a repair of the tissue of the body now from nutrition let's shift gears and come to diet what is diet now diet term is used so loosely so believe me when i even go for a wedding you know people come and ask me madam uh, give me a diet no for 1500 kilo calories those kind of things so diet is a word which is very usually loosely used so what is diet actually so diet comes from a middle english word called as diete or latin word called as dieta which means way of living so actually the word diet doesn't mean eating it means how you live okay so when it is used as a noun it is prescribed selection of food when it is used as a verb that is uh, a diet food then it means following a dietary regime uh, adjective having low calories and definition if you look at it it is humans alter their eating habits for many reasons including weight loss or there can be other health reason or sometimes it is even for religious reasons so a lot of people do diet for either of this and therefore what is a diet chart diet chart is basically a guideline of what you should eat and what you should not eat depending upon the disorders that you have so if you go to a dietitian you are going to get a diet chart which will specify what foods to eat in what quantity to eat depending upon what health problem you have so therefore diet chart is essentially a food prescription which is designed by a dietitian now you know why people come to dietitians for a diet chart because if you just type in google and i did that okay so you you just type in google a diet chart of 1500 kilo calories and look at the amount of results i think it's 4 lakh 17000 hits that you get so you have enough and more diet charts available you don't really need to go anything but following if the following so called diet charts would yield results world would be so much healthier everybody has a google so everybody has a diet chart actually you don't need a computer now you can even have it on your phone so google is available there and if you just put this you are going to get the same results it's not going to be partial to me or you and so you all have 4 lakh 17000 diet charts but still diabetes continues to be a problem overweight continues to be a problem heart disease continues to be a problem so having a diet chart is not enough now this is idf that is international diabetes federation atlas for prevalence of diabetes across the world and if you go to india yeah i am going to speak mainly about india because that's the uh, core population that is going to hear this so if you look at india we really have very high prevalence as compared to global prevalence of diabetes and there are many many reasons why we have it so the problem here is characteristics are that asian indian phenotype that is the way we are made okay that itself is a problem 
So we have more insulin resistance than our Western counterparts, our African counterparts, our even other Asian counterparts. To add to the problem, we are eating too much carbohydrates, right? So if you if you ask any Indian from uh, Kashmir to Kanyakumari, from Gujarat to Bengal or Assam, I would say, if you ask them, what did you eat? They'll either say roti or they will say rice. There is nothing else that people are eating. Even the so-called non-vegetarians of India eat one mound of rice with one piece of chicken or one mound of rice with one piece of fish or a mound of rice with half a cup of dal. They just put dal in the rice so that the color of rice changes from white to yellow. That's it. So the ultimate consumption in India is carbohydrate and that is actually a lead problem of this whole cycle. And therefore, there is a lot of insulin resistance, hence leading to blood glucose variation among Asian Indians. And that's the real problem. It's not the problem of Asian Indians living in India. What is seen is when Asian Indians migrate to other countries, maybe America, maybe United Kingdom, maybe Europe, maybe anywhere in the world, they carry the problem with them. So it is not geographic in nature. Okay, It is the phenotype of Asian Indians, which is a problem. So it is not because in India, there is a maid who comes home and makes chapatis in the morning that you eat more chapatis. It is not like that. When Indians go abroad and live, they can buy those packet chapatis which are available, warm them and eat them in limited quantity. The problem will still continue. Okay, so these are Indian diets. So if you look at the initial um, you know, research in India, because this is primarily a research group and hence I'm speaking in that light. So I was a co-author on this paper. So if you look at in initial research in India, most of the research came from southern part of India, uh, more specifically Dr. V. Mohan's group. Okay, And he kept saying that South Indian diets, because he did the studies in Chennai, so he could only speak about Chennai. So he kept saying diets of people in Chennai are too carb rich and that's the problem. So that is the time when nationally there were no studies done. And whole country said, oh, South Indians eat a lot of carbs. They eat rice, they eat idli, they eat dosa, they eat, you know, they keep eating carbs. And that is why they have diabetes. When this study was done, this is one of the landmark trials. It's called the STAT study, which was published in British Medical Journal. It showed that, you know, we studied diets of people all across India. And it was found that all across India, people ate the same kind of food. They just replace rice to wheat. So if you see here, see dark green represents carbohydrates. So 66% in South India, but if you compare it to Central India, which is Madhya Pradesh and Nagpur and all of those regions, actually it's 70%. It's even more. Okay, And other parts of the country is about 65 to 67%. So everybody is eating same amount of carbohydrate. The only difference is the kind of carbohydrate that you are consuming is different. So somewhere it is wheat, somewhere it is rice, somewhere it is both wheat and rice, somewhere it is millets. So, But the thing that doesn't change is basically we eat carbohydrates. Another starking thing which was seen with start study was that we eat very little protein. So look at it, in South India, just 10%. In Western India, 11%. In East India, which is primarily non-vegetarian because they will eat fish every single day, even then 14%. And then in North India, 13%. So this is actually a problem. So Indian diets, which start studies show that Indian diets are high carbohydrate, high fat, and they primarily lack a lot of protein. Now with this, I am again shifting gears to show what is globally available data. So actually, there were studies done to show what is the effect of macronutrients on mortality, more specifically carbohydrate. What do you mean by mortality chances of dying? Okay, so when this was a study done, okay, it is called the PURE study, which is prospective urban rural epidemiological study, which was done in 18 countries from five continents. So now we all know that we are all different. So Indians are different, uh, Europeans are different, that is Caucasians, uh, Africans are different, uh, other Asians are different. So, you know, whenever any study comes, we say, oh, maybe it's their phenotype which is showing this data. This doesn't happen to us. So therefore, to negate this effect, the study was done in 18 countries from five continents. So they took in all ethnicities in that study. Okay, so that is why it is a very good study to uh, show. I'm sorry. So this is what it showed. Okay, so this was shown that when 
energy from a nutrient was eaten what was happening to mortality more specifically cardiovascular mortality means what was the risk of dying from a cardiovascular event that is something like a heart attack there can be many more things but just to make it very very simple so if you see the last one if you can see my cursor i don't know if you can see it but if my cursor is seen energy from carbohydrate percentage you can see as the percentage of carbohydrates in the diet increase the risk of dying increases yeah cardiovascular and this is all cause mortality okay so what was seen is that as you start eating more and more carbs there is more and more risk of dying from a cardiovascular event and all cause mortality also now as compared to that all our lives you know when we were uh, i don't know about you lot of you are very very young um, younger than my children also so a uh, lot of times what i heard when i was growing up in my uh, when i was a college student or i was learning nutrition is that we were told that if you eat too much fats you will die earlier and if you see this line is saturated fat okay that is ghee okay or narad even then the mortality not as high as compared to carbohydrates and if you are having mono unsaturated fats that's coming from olive oil actually it drops and with polyunsaturated fat it remains sort of uh, parallel to the i mean it's not it doesn't go up or it doesn't go down so very interestingly what is shown is more carbs you eat faster is the death okay now what happens is after this paper got published what became very popular is called as ketogenic diet people started calling carbohydrates bad so carbohydrate became as good as a bad word so when i was in college fat was a bad word so people would judge you if you would eat fatty food now people judge you if you eat carbohydrate so now people even judge you if you eat a chapati more right so there was a lot of uh, 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 you know people started following ketogenic diet people started avoiding carbohydrates okay so <clears throat> after that after a couple of years there was a very very beautiful meta analysis which was done by a lady called as dr sara sidelman okay and this was published in lancet which is a very very reputed medical journal and what she showed is very interesting she showed that there is a u shape association between carbohydrate intake and mortality what does that mean that means if you have low carbohydrates you die faster if you have high carbohydrates also you die faster so now here is our grandmother's wisdom whatever you do you do in moderation this is what we have been taught since we are kids don't study too much don't not study at all study moderately you know don't play too much don't play too little you need to play every single day so moderation is key of life so that is our grandmother's wisdom which actually came to that 50% of calories if you look at this point the lowest point which is touching your x axis okay parallel to x axis where the mortality is the least is at 50% energy coming from carbohydrates so what does that mean that means we can still continue eating our indian diets all we have to do is start eating them moderately means instead of us there will be lot of young mothers who are listening to that program this program so instead of insisting that don't chapati dabbe mein khana hai your child can eat one and still be very very healthy so we need to reduce our carbohydrate to half of what we are eating okay now then we go to something which everybody wants a diet to, to hear from a dietitian weight loss now what is weight loss so obesity related conditions improve with a modest weight loss of 5 to 10% now remember one thing weight loss is not zero size figure so weight loss is not about becoming a miss india or a miss world or a miss universe weight loss is about achieving good health losing weight and that can be achieved with just 5% weight loss what does that mean that means if you are 100 kilos today if you become 95 kilos you have actually decreased your chance of getting heart disease or diabetes if you are 100 kilos and you become 90 you have decreased it much more but that is not the thing what weight loss is weight loss is defined as a successful weight loss is 5% reduction of initial body weight which is maintained for one year and this is the biggest problem so in our language in dietetic language we say weight loss is very easy you zip your lip and you move your hip you will lose weight it's not a big thing stop eating and start running everybody will lose weight 
But the point is, how many days are you going to do that? The day you stop doing that, all the weight will come back. And therefore, weight loss has to be done under guidance of a trained person who is a dietitian or a doctor who has. So, the doctors who do weight loss are called as bariatric physicians and you can go to one of them or you can go to a dietitian, any of them to do weight loss. Now, this is weight loss uh, treatment phases and I, I love this slide. So the first slide is when patient comes to me, first three to six months. I call it a honeymoon phase. Why? Because both are involved with each other. The patient comes every week. We are looking at patient every time and we are completely involved. So patient, you know, even 100 grams loss, madam, 100 gram come over. They will come and report. So it's a very good relation, amicable. And then what happens after six months, patient loses the weight. And then patient becomes non-compliant. Usko lagta hai ab kam ho gaya na. Abhi kyu jana hai Shilpa Joshi ke paas na. Story is over. Right? Then what happens is this is a lifelong phase. It's called the marriage. Which is the lifelong phase. And this phase whenever you stop doing whatever you were doing. All the weight which you lost comes back. And that's the problem of obesity. So obesity can only be managed. It cannot be conquered. You have to work with obesity. You have to manage your weight. Weight loss is never a permanent thing. I'm not going to explain this because this is too much of science to be explained. But what is a ketogenic diet? A simple thing to achieve weight loss. A lot of people follow ketogenic diet where you eat less than 50 grams of carbohydrate in a day. Now, just to give you an idea, what is 50 gram carbohydrate? Okay. So one chapati, chota fulka, you know, which is made from atta as much as a limbu. Indian lemon size atta is 100 calories and gives you 21 grams of carbohydrate. So in a day, if you eat two fulkas and not eat anything else, you have achieved 50 grams of carbs. Okay. If you eat a bhaji with it, if you eat a cup of dal, you will be able to probably eat only half a fulka every day. And these diets are extremely popular because they give very, very fast results. Then there are diets which were very popular when I was student. Low fat diets. So, in when I was a student, people thought of oil as a bad word. Okay, so nobody, people were boiling food and eating. Okay, and these diets were very, very popular then. But now, they are no longer popular where you eat only boiled food. But what is the popular thing today? You know, buzzword is the right terminology to use. is called as intermittent fasting. Especially in Maharashtra, everybody is talking about intermittent fasting. The jo khana hai wo khao. Don't eat for 16 hours and then eat for 8 hours. Eat what you want to eat. Okay, so that is called as intermittent fasting. So what is intermittent fasting? Intermittent fasting is an approach or it's a dietary pattern that is centered around periodic fasting. So there are two common forms of intermittent fasting. It's called as alternate day fast or time-restricted eating. So I am sure all your grandmothers or ajis, they used to do a somvar, a mangalwar, a guruvar, you know, when we, we always have seen our Ajis doing Sankashti, Ekadashi, this, that, all, you know, and if you fast in real sense, every once a week, every day, and when I mean fast means no Sabudana Kichadi, no Thalipit, none of that. Fast means no consumption of calories. That is labeled as intermittent fast. It's as simple as that. But what has become popular today is called as time-restricted feeding. What is time-restricted feeding? Time-restricted feeding refers to restriction of food for a certain period of the day. And then after that, there is a time in which food or caloric consumption can happen. So these are very, very popular and they have shown very, very promising results. So people do generally a uh, 8 is to 16 pattern. That is, they fast for 16 hours. And then they eat for eight hours and they have also given very good results. But if you look at scientific data, because this is a scientific forum, if you look at scientific data, the difference between uh, weight loss after intermittent fasting as compared to normal eating, I mean, it's called as continuous caloric restriction, means you do not fast, but you eat same kind of food every day, it's the same. So there is no difference. So there is not much difference between both of them. Then there are people who are very, very busy professionals like most of you will be, who are traveling maybe three days a week, four days a week. And they really can't follow a diet because they are not eating at home. Right? If you are if you're traveling for three days a week, how will you eat food at home? 
it's not possible it's not possible to cook food and carry with you and a lot of times you have no choice but to eat out lot of you who are in professions like marketing also have to take your colleagues or your uh, people working with you for lunches and dinners correct so these people find it very very difficult to lose weight for them we use meal replacement therapy so what is meal replacement therapy it is intended as substitute for one or two regular solid food or snacks okay and they are available all across the world including india they provide a nutritionally balanced lower fat low energy meal which is also moderate in carbohydrates they are available everywhere so if you are entertaining somebody for dinner okay then for lunch you can have a meal replacement shake okay and for breakfast you can have something small and thereby maintain your caloric intake now is my favorite part decoding myths okay because this is something my patients come to me all the time with and this is what i do in my clinic so the main myth which we have is i exercise so i can eat anything and this i see every morning so i walk in a park every morning and there are a lot of people who walk with me and they have been walking with me for years okay and what they do after they have walked for whatever 5 kilometers or whatever it is they all get together and they go to udupi restaurant and they eat idli vada dosa every single day and then they complain ki amchi sugar control madhe yet nahi cholesterol is high so on and so forth so remember exercising does not give you a right to eat everything so if you eat a cap packet of chips okay you need to walk 2 hours give me tell me you can write it in the comment box how many people actually eat a packet of chips and then go and walk for 2 hours that is a starter after that you eat a full meal and then you also order a dessert yes or no if you eat two samosas you need to walk 15 kilometers how many people do that right so eat the eating exercising does not give you a right to eat unhealthy okay if you eat a big pizza you need to walk for 8 hours how many of us do that i'm sorry okay so remember this saying a minute on your lips is lifetime on your hips so you have to always think of what you are eating when you are choosing to eat other myth which i frequently see okay and this comes to me from every patient don't eat dals dals are very heavy and they will cause a lot of weight gain okay so people stop eating dals dals anyway nobody likes for a country who is vegetarian that's the only vegetarian source of protein which nobody eats in our country kyu dal nahi khate ho gas hota hai aur acidity hoti hai is the answer but the eating dal is very very important so eating protein is very important whether you want to maintain your metabolic health like maintain your blood sugar maintain your immunity maintain your uh, heart health it is very very important and therefore eating vegetarian protein is very important because vegetarian protein is low in fat same protein comes from eggs also but if you eat one egg you get 7 grams of fat if you eat one vati of dal you only get 2.5 grams of fat so you have to remember that it is also lower in fat hence lower in calories so this is a paper which i had published um, you know which i'm just showing you here um, we had published this paper in um, american diabetes association as a poster where one of my student her name is ankita mehta so ankita had actually made khakras from rajma so instead of making wheat khakras she used rajma to make khakras and she gave it to my patients who had pre diabetes okay pre diabetes is a stage before diabetes so when your fasting sugar is above 100 but not yet 126 your post prandial sugar is above 140 but not yet above 180 that's the time which is called as pre diabetes and we gave it to people having pre diabetes and in 3 months we found that these people actually changed their blood sugars and got it to normal levels only when two chapatis in a day were replaced by these two khakras and this is a magic of the ingredient which is dal or your rajma but you can have it of matki you can have it of moog you can have it of any kind of pulse that you want now another problem if uric acids are high dal should be completely avoided and this we see very often and people get very high uric acids very often okay now uric acids come from protein containing foods because they basically come from a uh, 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 new a bio a, a biochemical molecule called as purine 
so it's a it's a output of purine metabolism now purine basically comes from non vegetarian food more specifically fish and red meat but we see strict vegetarian people say jains who don't even eat kanda lasun also getting very high uric acids then how do they get high uric acid they get high uric acid because they eat a lot of carbs in fact vegetarian protein has beneficial role when people get gout gout is when your joints start paining because of high uric acid so people larger amount of vegetable protein had the lowest risk 27% low risk of gout as compared to people who did not consume protein so what are the lifestyle risk factors for hyperuricemia and i am not saying this this is coming from reference literature okay so high bmi means when you have high weight the risk of gout is more high waist to hip ratio when your stomach is is uh, you know you have lot of weight on your stomach okay fructose fructose is coming from fruit juices so when you have very high fructose in your diet too much of fruit juice people stop drinking water they drink fruit juice all the time they will get high risk of hyperuricemia okay then what will, alcohol will have very high risk of hyperuricemia meats seafood etc will also increase the chance of uh, hyperuricemia but if you see purine rich vegetables and nuts neutral relation no relation with uh, or it does not cause gout or hyperuricemia so that uh, coffee decreases the risk low fat dairy decreases the risk and vitamin c decreases the risk and hence you should consume good amount of vitamin c which comes from foods like tomatoes etc consume them limbu consume them liberally so this is a health pyramid for gout so if you have high uric acid you need to lose weight you need to eat whole grains okay so no white rice red rice or brown rice okay plant oils decrease fruits so if you eat more than two fruits a day your uric acid goes high so remember in days of mango people at least eat two to three mangoes a day it will increase uric acid along with increasing blood sugar but vegetables decrease it nuts and legumes legumes means dals decrease it fish increases it poultry increases it and eggs increases it can you see one arrow going up okay low fat dairy products decrease it high fat dairy products are neutral but what increases uric acid which is at the top of pyramid white rice white bread potatoes pasta sweets red meat and butter so try to be off all these things which are on top use them sparingly another myth is nuts should be avoided as they are in high in fat kaju khau naka cholesterol vaade this is a normal thing which all people say don't eat kaju cholesterol badega so remember one thing nuts are very very beneficial for us in fact they are cardio protective they protect your heart okay nuts such as walnuts which are rich in certain kinds of fat they protect you from fatal coronary heart disease means heart attack okay so they consume nuts every day all kinds of nuts are good for you but especially walnuts are very very good for you the biggest myth which is the last myth i am going to discuss is diabetes friendly oil so people pay 10 times more and buy a oil because it is diabetes friendly remember oil cannot be friendly to anything okay so remember any oil which is consumed in large amount will not be friendly at all so try to consume oil in limited amount so what is very important to understand is to eat is a necessity but to eat intelligently is an art and that's the art that we are here to decode okay so uh, these are uses and misuses of food so what happens is why is eating intelligently a art most of the time this food is misused as a stress buster kal mera result hai to aaj i am eating because i am so stressed that i'm going to fail or i'm not going to get whatever distinction or whatever you are presuming or tomorrow is my viva today i'm busy eating because i don't know what my um, external examiner is going to ask lot of time to kill time you eat you have nothing better to do so you eat right so you are seeing a movie there is nothing better to do with it so you eat popcorn right tool for socializing we all meet our friends over tea and coffee have you ever met your friend over run chalo let's run in the park together have you ever done that no 
so this is misusing food and in india the biggest problem is in india food is love language who is a good mother who makes nice food for her children who is a good wife who makes nice food for her husband so that becomes a love language in india and of course it's a inheritance because our whole culture is built around food so now let's look at some practical tips okay so look at these foods this is something that you eat every day right yes or no uh, upma uh, daliya idli dosa puri bhaji dahi bhat um, uh, this is khichdi or it is called bishibele bhat in karnataka or it can be khichdi or it can be dal rice or sambar rice these are all garbage foods and not that they are bad foods the point is we just eat these and we don't do any physical activity see our forefathers ate this and went to the fields and plowed the fields we eat this and we sit in front of our computer terminals and that is why we are getting all the problem so this is a meal that indian seat right thodi shi bhaji little bit thoda sa salad little bit half a katori dal and maybe three four chapatis do you think this is a balanced meal no it is completely imbalanced because there are only chapatis which are seen in this meal there is nothing else everything else is just for kya bolte hai flavor so how should this plate look this plate should look like this where chapati is minimal but there are two things two fiber sources so a bowl of salad a green leafy vegetable which is a lot of fiber in the diet a bowl of dal and maybe if you can't do a kadhi you can do a dahi you can do a paneer if you are a non vegetarian you can do non veg and you can only have it with one roti this gets you to the point of using 50% of your calories as carbohydrates okay so this is healthy plate okay and this healthy plate is again very very important to be so these are sources of fiber and micronutrients these are sources of protein and these are sources of carbohydrates okay so these are healthy breakfast options because these are the questions which are asked to me so then what should we eat for breakfast so it can be eggs it can be chillas or mukka dosa filled with paneer or with vegetables it can be thali peet from bhajani which is made with a lot of dals put in it it can be a moong ka dhokla it can be a uttappam made with more urad dal with a lot of vegetables in it it can be a dal paratha with green leafy vegetable in it okay so on and so forth so these are great breakfast option what are the snack options because snacking is and if a lot of you are students snacking is secondary to being a student right while you are studying you need a katori with something on your side right to eat all the time to keep you awake most of the time is if i don't eat i will sleep so i need to eat so snack on nuts nuts are great snacking option snack on seeds seeds are great snacking option snack on chana chana is a great snacking option snack on pulses this is moong but you can have other things to snack on drink buttermilk instead of drinking fruit juice okay buttermilk is taak chash okay so drink that or you get something called as sattu okay so sattu can be mixed in water and had or if you can have a low fat milk okay but do not have a fruit juice here and if you want to have a fruit have a fruit don't make it into juice god has given you teeth to make juice here not in a mixer okay so mixer is man made this is made by nature so you need to utilize it how to make dry food weight and diabetes friendly instead of just eating rice eat it with equal amount of dal so eat dal rice i always tell my patient when you say dal rice what comes first dal so dal has to be more than rice dal jada chawal kam if you are eating a bowl of fruits add some nuts to it okay it will just make it more healthy if you are making chapatis at home add some greens to it instead of eating just pohe you can have dahi with it or you can have sprouts with it or you can have paneer with it and make it more protein rich so instead of having all these things which are there in your cafeteria have these things these are really really healthy food and this is the way you should serve your plate this is called as plate partitioning method this is internationally accepted way of eating so take a plate divided into four parts a quarter part of raw vegetables a quarter part of cooked vegetable a quarter part of protein 
and only a quarter part of carbohydrate which is either roti or rice or a potato okay i whether veg or non veg this is how you should eat so people who eat non veg are especially when you give them non veg they feel abhi ghas pus kon khayega who will eat vegetables correct so i will not eat a salad i will not eat a bhaji i will not eat anything chicken and rice or chicken and chapati fish and rice or fish and chapati no even if there is fish even if there is chicken even if there is egg eating vegetables is as important as eating that non vegetarian food so this is rajma rice i think most of you love rajma rice you know it's a food which has become very very popular so typically when you eat rajma rice you have half a plate of rice and one vati of rajma and one kande ka tukda at the end of it right that's not how you eat rajma rice you eat a half a plate of salad with one bowl of rice one bowl of rajma and one bowl of curd that's what makes this plate balance so if you are eating idli sambar instead of eating four idlis with half a bowl of sambar eat one idli with two bowls of sambar does that mean i don't have to eat second idli no you eat second idli take another two bowls of sambar you eat third idli take another two bowls of sambar my dear friends you won't be able to eat more than two and that will cause weight loss that will cause diabetes management so it is not eating about cooking different food it is about eating same food in a different way so nobody has to cook any food different it's the same food that is cooked at your house you are just choosing to eat it in a different way and that's where i come to something called as order of eating there is a lot of research published on how you should eat food so always begin with a protein so that you achieve satiation so in this case take dal and eat a bowl of dal then a bowl of salad then a bowl of bhaji then a bowl of dahi then take more bhaji more dal and eat it with your chapati if you do that you will see that you will eat only one chapati you will reduce your carbohydrate consumption and thereby improve your health parameter so it sometimes it's you have to ask hard questions it is time to unlearn do you really need roti and rice every time that you eat across the globe people don't eat roti and rice and they are perfectly healthy nothing is happening to them so it's very very important to ask hard questions whether you need to eat roti and rice as much and therefore just to show you instead of eating four five mari biscuits please eat one chapati even if it is left over it is fine okay instead of having all these kind of softies and soft serves etc have chaas and have nuts easy options okay instead of having these frankies etc just have a banana and soya milk or better eggs or sprouts or something like that which is very very low and you can always have meal replacement instead of having a big meal if you are trying to watch weight now i am just ending with last two slides i am doing this because there are a lot of young people in this crowd and this is a hard message that i want to give you all so whenever i ask people do you eat vegetables people say hey, hum log bhaji khate hain kya khate ho bhindi aur gobhi do you eat green leafy vegetables yes 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 we eat what do you eat palak and methi there are so many green leafy vegetables in the market this is called eating healthy not this this is also eating healthy but not really this is eating healthy naam ke vaste this is eating healthy in reality so try to eat different fruits and vegetable it is very very it's called nutritional diversity more diverse is your diet better is your health again there is a saying called as an apple a day keeps doctor away right and what about other fruits they don't keep doctor away of course they keep doctors away choose these local fruits these are very very good for you guava is also very good for you and this is your true b complex tablet so please have this every day this is your truest micronutrient supplementation another thing where i i hear it a lot because we are country of festivals you know every time we eat a mitha and we blame it on god prasad hai na madam kaise nahi bolenge prasad to khana padta hai na and they eat sweet and we have one puja every day one festival every day but we need to change our attitude we want to celebrate festival celebrate it with fruits so instead of having mithai every time for prasad sometimes you can have fruits for prasad yeah everybody's health will improve and you can eat it in a better quantity so simple message the last slide masala dosa with chutney bad choice sada dosa with sambar better choice but the great choice is lot of sambar with one sada dosa Thank you so much for a patient hearing and I'll be happy 
answer any questions that you have. Thank you, Shilpa, ma'am. Uh, that was really good. Uh, I really like the way you put, divided your topic, introduced the topic and everything. We have so many questions. Uh, I hope we'll be able to cover them in this next 40 minutes or so. And if not, uh, we will uh, send you some of the questions which were like, not answered so that we can get back to our audience with all the answers. Um, so I'm going to, I've like divided the questions with like what, uh, different types of questions people have asked. And, uh, I'll start with lifestyle diet and exercise because, uh, one, this is one of the main points of, uh, this health karta series. So, um, you have already told about all the things that we need to change or adapt, uh, but just to summarize your entire nice talk uh one of the question was like if you want to do changes in your lifestyle what would be the three main things that you would want uh people to change uh so changes are different at different points in life but what really works for people is eating healthy okay and you don't have to get to perfection you're always work in progress so if you are eating one chocolate every day, even if you change it and make it one chocolate a week, it's a change. So mm -hmm. aim at changing your diet. Aim at getting some physical activity every day. So I understand most of you are busy. You lead very busy lives. Okay. But that does not prevent you from doing a walk for 15 minutes. If not one hour, let's not aim at one hour. Let's start okay. with 15 minutes. So do that. And the third and most important thing, which is never spoken about, and even I did not speak because my talk was on nutrition, but I talk a lot about it to my patients is getting sleep. So it's very important to get eight to nine hours of good quality sleep. Lying down in the bed is not equal to sleep. Sleep is when you actually sleep and your body gets repaired in that time. So you can actually have good health if you have good quality sleep and therefore be away from gadgets if gadgets are bothering you and try to get good sleep for eight to nine hours. Actually, continuing on that, we also had a question about like, how do you improve your sleep cycle or like how sleep, nutrition and the metabolic disorders that come are like related to each other? So most important thing to get good sleep, you should eat three hours before sleeping. If you're going to eat and sleep, you're going to be so heavy that when you lie down, you feel like food is on your chest. Mm. In Marathi, we call it var var yata. So you right. feel like the food is gushing up, right? It's called yeah, GRD. So try to eat two to three hours before you... Uh, so if you are going planning to sleep at say 10 o'clock, try to finish your dinner by 7.30. Mm -hmm. After your dinner, even if you are clearing up your own dishes at home, you have had a walk, ideal would be go and have a 15-minute walk so that you push the food down. And then when you are sleeping, go into the room without a gadget. Please don't keep your phone next to you. You will never sleep ever in your life. Because somebody is awake at some part of the world who is ready to, uh, you know, talk to you. Right. So, yeah, so have that downtime and go to sleep. Mm -hmm. And even among food, try not to eat heavy foods at night. So if you're eating a lot of masala, deep fried, very sweet food, remember the gastric emptying is delayed. That is, the food to leave stomach and enter intestine takes a longer time. And therefore, you start feeling heavy. So at night, try to eat light meal. Lots right. of vegetable, protein, and maybe a little bit of carb, which is low fat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, then let's move on to like the diet part of the questions. Um, so you talked a lot about proteins and how they are important. One of the questions was, um, say you cannot have everything in your diet, which is like protein. And if you take supplementary protein, is that enough to replace your dietary proteins? Yeah. So supplemental protein basically come from two sources. They are either whey based. Or if they are plant-based, they typically come from soy or pea. Pea is matar. Right. Green peas. So yeah, you can take it. Uh, but remember uh, the, I mean, if, if say you are living in a hostel 
or you are living abroad where you do not have the time to cook of course that becomes a good source of protein but nothing ever can replace goodness of food so try yes. to get it through food but if you can't then yes supplemental okay. protein is good as well take it under guidance of a medical professional just mm -hmm. don't go buy one box and start consuming it at libitum it doesn't work like that you have to go it's a product you need a i mean you need to know the dosage and that's how you will take it right yeah i think that's very important in this google world that you don't have to rather you should not just google everything and decide on your own um and then uh, protein as you said is important but uh, i think you also covered this topic that yes protein is important but uh, someone asked like do you think it's overrated sometimes on social media uh, i think you covered that yes carbohydrates is also important and you shouldn't just eat proteins because that's not going to help but um... but it is not overrated especially in indian scenario it is definitely not overrated we are a protein deficient nation our basic eating does not involve protein and mm -hmm. therefore i am not saying things take, take supplement if you see my presentation supplements are not even uh, talked about the reason yeah. i specifically didn't speak about it is because i still wish that you need to eat protein from the dietary source so try to get protein from your dals and pulses and eggs and chicken and fish whatever can you you can get hold of but proteins are not overrated in fact i would go the other way around and say very little is spoken about protein i think there needs to be more noise around protein because protein are one foods that actually help us so our best friends we are not talking about we are only talking about our enemies which are carbs and fats but we need to talk positive so we need to talk about proteins okay uh and then uh with the same topic um now there are like so many protein shakes available in the market uh but there are some protein shakes uh, about which it said like it affects kidneys or liver or something and uh, how do you then decide which one to take so that's why i said you cannot buy protein shakes off the shelf right you need to talk to a professional dietitian before you go and buy one she will see your weight she will see your metabolic health he or she and they are going to give you a suggestion it's a prescription so you go they will give you a dose they will give you a time they will give you the way in which it has to be consumed and it has to be followed strictly right and uh, i think you also covered this a bit but could you have some tips for students that are living abroad and don't have enough time to cook but how do they manage their diet and also um in general like uh lifestyle changes that they need to do to have so, better life so i have my own children who live abroad just like you all and um, i know how difficult it is so most important is stocking your pantry well so as students you need to give at least 2 to 3 hours in a week to decide what you need to buy in terms of grocery don't live on a day to day existence so spend that 3 hours on a saturday or sunday where in one hour you make a list of what you want or that you can do on daily basis and then go buy it and store it so have fruits in your fridge have vegetables in your refrigerator cut them over the weekend and store them so that you can use them all through the week if you are very very busy you get pre cut vegetables in the market okay if you are a non vegetarian definitely buy eggs and keep you can boil a egg it takes exactly 7 minutes to boil a egg so if you are going for a shower keep it on your gas go for a shower when you are out egg is ready for you okay so eating eggs or having yogurt for example unflavored yogurt not the flavored ones right okay mm. so unflavored greek yogurt or plain yogurt is a great source tofu is a great source paneer is a great source so stock these things in fridge what i have observed is it's not that students don't have time the point is students don't plan for food they're so pl tired planning their education and their classes and their homework that food takes a back seat which it shouldn't so mm -hmm. create a excel sheet i think what is very important is to create a excel sheet and roughly write what you are going to eat every day a week so monday tuesday wednesday thursday and you can change it based on availability of the food in your kitchen 
but at least you know what to do when you come back home. Most of the time, the question is, once you have come home, now you don't know what to do. There is food, there is raw material in your fridge, but you don't know what to do with it. And that is what you need to predecide. Right. Um, I, I tried doing that, but I should get better at it as well. <laughs> Um, and uh, since your expertise are in diabetes, uh, we have a lot of questions about diabetes in general. Uh, some of the questions are, uh, what is, uh, like, what do you do for prevention of a diabetes in the pre-diabetic phase? And uh, how exercise and diet you should manage in both pre, during diabetes and post-diabetic so pre-diabetes stage and I think with our gene pool, what we are seeing is we are all predisposed to diabetes, most of us, 90% of our population. And that is, some, therefore, this is something every Indian should do. What I said, the plate method which I showed, half the plate of vegetables, a quarter plate of protein and just the quarter plate of carbs. That is something that you should do. If you are not doing it, start, start doing it from today. Okay, so just if, for example, you buy parathas from outside, just don't eat those parathas. Cut few vegetables for yourself. Get a bowl of yogurt. And after you have eaten vegetables and yogurt, then eat one paratha. Then you will not eat three, you will eat one. So that is something that is very important. So carb restriction. I am not saying carb avoidance. I am saying carb restriction is very, very, very important as far as prevention and management of diabetes, both go. So once you have diabetes, carbs have to be restricted. Otherwise, it's not going to work. But even in prevention, you know, emphasize on protein, emphasize a lot on eating vegetables. So what are vegetables? Vegetables are fruits which do not have sugar in them. So eat plenty and more vegetables that you can. If you can eat a half a kilo of vegetables every day, Please eat them. They are really, really good for you. And then everything can follow vegetables. Okay. This is good for prevention and for uh, if you have diabetes as well. Exercise again. If you want to prevent, indulge in both cardiovascular and weight training. So remember, just walking or just running is not going to help you. Muscle is the biggest organ that utilizes blood glucose via insulin. If your mm -hmm. insulin sensitivity, you want to improve, you have to improve your muscle mass. And muscle mass cannot be improved just by eating protein. You have to use muscle to improve it. The rule of muscle is use it or lose it. So if you don't use muscle, you will lose muscle. So try to do weight training or any kind of anaerobic exercise on a daily basis. Okay. If so, not daily, at least four times a week. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm digressing a little bit, but since you mentioned that you should exercise every day, in irrespective of the fact that you don't always count how many calories you consume in a day, uh, what would you suggest like what's like basal level of exercise that we should oh, follow, whether whatever you eat or not? Very, very, very simple thing is 10,000 steps a day. Okay. It's very simple. I mean, that is as basic as it gets. So 10,000 steps a day is needed by us. It's not exercise. But people barely reach 2,000 steps a day also. So you don't have to go out and exercise because all of you live in regions where there is snow and whatever and tornadoes. Walk in your house if you can't go out. Mm -hmm. but, but finish those 10,000 steps. Yeah. And if you're wearing a smartwatch, don't move your hand because that also <laughs> is considered as steps. So don't become, don't yeah. do that. <laughs> True. Yeah. Uh, we have one more question about diabetes, uh, which is, um, why is fasting insulin not used as a standard test to check if there is need for a uh, course correction in diet and exercise regimes? Just fasting insulin has no meaning. There is a, there is a calculation called as HOMA IR. It's a marker of insulin resistance, which involves both fasting insulin levels and fasting sugar levels. Both together are put in an equation, which is called as a HOMA IR equation. And that is used to find out how much insulin resistance you have. Because before getting diabetes, your insulin levels are always more. 
that is a period of insulin resistance and to overcome resistance your body secretes a lot of insulin mm -hmm. and that is one step before diabetes happens so instead of using just uh, insulin levels a calculation called as homa ir is used okay interesting uh, we have some more questions but about some other health aspects um people were wondering how diet is related to allergies or asthma and what can you do or like what should you do uh, to prevent so that? asthma can happen because of many things mm -hmm. so asthma typically happens because of pollen and dust mite and other things but lot of times there are people who are allergic to certain foods which can also cause them to wheeze for example mm -hmm. you eat certain kind of food and you get allergic to it and you wheeze but asthma per se is not related to food asthma is per se related to a allergen which is there in the air most of the times right um, and we have a question about type 1 diabetes and uh, how is like different how is it different from for a uh, general audience if you could de uh, define it and what do you do so our um, uh, our pancreas has something called as islets of Langerhans, which have beta cells. And beta cells have the job of producing insulin. In type 1 diabetes, your beta cells produce no insulin or very, very little insulin, which is not sufficient to sustain life. In type 2 diabetes, it's the other way around. Your body to overcome insulin resistance produces too much of insulin, but it mm. is no good because you are, you are so resistant to it that you are not able to utilize. So in type 1 diabetes, there is no insulin production and hence taking insulin is the only treatment. You don't have it, so you take it. Whereas in type 2 diabetes, you have enough insulin, sometimes more insulin, but it is not working well. So you take oral medications to make it work well. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. And again, I believe uh, having a balanced diet is something that you can do to uh, reverse diabetes. Again, another question was, what's diabetes reversal? And you can talk it for like both type 1, type 2 diabetes. So type 1 diabetes cannot be reversed. Okay. And please understand that do not make those children go through any program of reversal or in the, there, there is a problem, there is a deficiency in your body and not eating or eating something is not going to make it up. Mm -hmm. So for type 1 diabetes, the only answer is take insulin and eat healthy. There is no diet for type 1 diabetes. You can eat everything, including sweets, as long as you take enough insulin. So uh, my request to everybody is that for type 1 diabetes, it is very important not to stop insulin. And it is also very important not to reduce doses of insulin without speaking to the doctor or the healthcare provider. It is very important for them to eat a balanced diet. So they can eat whatever, chapati, rice, um, whatever, uh, dal, sabzi, everything. It's very important that they eat a balanced diet. Okay. Now, as far as type 2 diabetes is concerned, that can be reversed. It is not called reversal, it's called remission. Remission because you can go back to that state if you don't follow what is told to you. So mm -hmm. reversal is a complete U-turn, which doesn't happen. So it is a temporary U-turn and you can go back on the same path if you stop following. So reversal is a wrong word. The right word is remission because you are there for a temporary period of time till you behave well. Now, for remission, there is a lot of data which is published across the world. What you need is called as VLCD, very low calorie diet. Mm -hmm. So normally we consume about 1500 to 1800 calories per day. In diabetes remission, you can consume about 800 calories a day. So okay. you are dropping your caloric intake to half and in lot of times one third of what you are eating normally. It's a very structured program one has to go through and remission is possible. But remission cannot happen to everybody. You have to have, have diabetes within six years of diagnosis. 
So say your mm-hmm. diabetes 20 year old, you can't have remission. You can have control, but you can't have remission. So it has to be newly diagnosed. And then there are a lot of other conditions around it. If somebody needs it, then we can speak about it separately. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Um, the next question we have is, is there any concept as healthy obesity? And how do you differentiate between having obesity, just like having abdominal fat versus fat deposits on the hips? In, uh, how do you so there control? is something called as a waist to hip ratio. Mm-hmm. So take your waist measurement, divide it by your hip measurement, and the answer should be less than 0.8. Okay. In centimeters. So take your waist in centimeters, hip in centimeters, divided waist upon hip, and answer should be 0.8, less than 0.8 for women and less than 0.9 for men. There's a standard calculation. There's okay. Um we, I um we had like a very basic kind of question. So we follow these um uh, eating schedules that morning we wake up and eat something, after lunch, some snacks, dinner, something like that. Uh is there any evolutionary perspective behind this? Or uh maybe I will add up to that as how circadian rhythm and eating on time correlates well. So if you look at evolutionary aspect, first of all, human being got to do agriculture much later in life. So if you look in a perspective of evolution, till we did agriculture, we were getting food once in two or three days. Because if you got on a tree and got fruits, you ate it. If you hunted an animal, you got it. Since we have started doing agriculture, We were getting food every day, but we also know historically we went through a lot of famines. Mm -hmm. So if you read Indian history, we have famine of 1850, we have the Great Bengal famine, and we have many famines. So therefore, famine is a part of normal living. Now the problem is our bodies in India are very used to famine. And therefore, we have activated a fat storage gene. Because we are a byproduct of a generation who survived famine. All our great-great-grandparents survived famine and hence we are here. Right? If they died, we wouldn't have been here. Yeah. Right? So we are all a byproduct of people who survived famine who could activate their fat gene. Mm -hmm. So the food was converted to fat and that was utilized in the time of famine. Now what has happened? We have activated fat gene but we don't have famines. And because we don't have famines, we have diabetes. Okay. So therefore, eating less is very important because our body is used to famines. And therefore, if you're talking about schedule of eating, first and most important thing is feel hungry to eat. Don't eat because it is 9 o'clock in the morning. Eat because you are hungry. Mm -hmm. If you're not hungry, that 9 o'clock doesn't matter. Right. Eat if you are hungry. Don't eat because it's 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock or 12 o'clock. That's the first thing. So mm-hmm. understand there is a difference between hunger and appetite. If I see a pani puri wala and I've eaten a full lunch, I will still feel hungry. Because that's not hunger. I'm just craving to eat pani puri. Yeah, so I may have eaten right. puran puri, but I'll still eat pani puri. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's not hunger. So one needs to identify what true hunger is and Eat when you are hungry. Circadian rhythm is please don't eat after sunsets. So eat in the daylight. Why? Because once the sun sets, you produce hormone melatonin under your skin. Okay. In the form in darkness. And then of course your whole system sort of slows down after it. So try to eat by 6, 6.30 which you all of you do. In the western world eating dinner at 5.36 is a norm. And most of the Indians laugh at it. But it's a very, very good thing to eat early. But they snack after that at 8 o'clock and 9 o'clock. That should not be done. Once you have eaten, you are done. You eat next day morning. Right. 
Yeah. Um, actually, getting on uh, the fat gene you said, uh, if I understand correctly, that just means your excess carbohydrates are going to be stored as fats. No, excess anything will be stored as fat. That okay. is the fat gene which is activated. Uh, okay. And then how is excess fat stored? Is this like what we see like in abdominal uh, fat deposits? And no, like it this? is not only stored in under the skin subcutaneous fat. It mm -hmm. is stored inside the muscle, which is intramuscular fat. And it is stored inside your organs, that is intra-organ fat. So if a lot mm -hmm. of you, whoever is doing medicine or who has interest in medical science, they will hear a term called as fatty liver, which is very, very popular now. People get ultrasound done and then they have fatty liver 1, grade 1, grade 2, grade 3. That is stored liver, I mean stored fat inside a liver. Okay. Uh, you talked about intermittent fasting, uh, where or like in general fasting shouldn't be should be the phase where you do not consume any calories. Uh, one of the questions could be like, do you get gases or acidity because you don't in eat fact, anything? It helps in acidity and gases. People okay. who have chronic acidity when they do intermittent fasting, the thing that they come back and tell us is bahut Oh, nice. Keep so, drinking water, drink nimbu pani, mm -hmm. drink patla chas if you want. Okay. Do not drink fruit juice. Okay. <laughs> fruit juice is the worst thing that you can drink for your health. Right. I was actually going to ask you about how what about fruits, but I think you fruits just answered. Fruits are great. Okay. Fruits are great, not okay. fruit juice. Okay. Something that doesn't have added sugar to it or any no, added things even, to it. Right? Even if you squeeze fruit juice in your mm -hmm. house, it is mm -hmm. still bad. Right, because we don't get any fibers that are actually there Correct. in the fruit. So you have okay. to chew the fruit yourself. Mm -hmm. Also remember, when you are eating a fruit, you eat one apple or you eat one orange. When you have to take out a glass of juice, you need at least three oranges. Right. So you are unnecessarily eating more calories. Unnecessary. Mm -hmm. You didn't need those two. Yes. But you are not going to drink 50 ml of fruit juice, right? So to make it 150 ml, you need three oranges. But if you eat, you will eat one. Right. Yeah, makes sense. Um, and uh, you talked about dals. And one of the questions was like, yes, there are a lot of vegetarian people. And I think you summarized like eating dals is very important. Uh, so one question was like, what other sources of protein are there for vegetarian people? So and dal, second, dal, no. sprouts, dahi, milk, paneer, tofu. Okay. Yeah. And if you also eat eggs, then eggs. Right. Okay. Now and vegetarian the... people do eat eggs, so that's why eggs. But otherwise, all of these. Mm -hmm. And the second part to the question was like, um, it said that the vegetarian or the dal protein is not a complete protein. One, can you define what complete protein is and then what should you do? To so complete up? protein is a protein in which you have all the amino acids present. And that, that is coming only from non-vegetarian. When you eat from vegetarian foods, some amino acids will be missing. And hence, combinations are very important. Mm -hmm. So that is why dal chawal. So when you mix dal and rice, you make up, make it into a complete protein. Okay, that is why dal roti khao prabhu ke gun gao is the saying. <laughs> Not dal sabzi khao prabhu ke gun gao. To make yeah. it a complete protein, you need to mix a cereal and a pulse together. Um, so thank you. We, I think, have covered all the questions that I have received so far. Uh, if in the audience, if you have more questions. Oh, okay, there's one more question. Uh, what are the sources of vitamin B12 for vegetarian people? No, you Is need that... to take tablets. There are no sources of vitamin B12 in vegetarian diet. So then the question would be, then how come our grandparents and parents who never took uh, these vitamins had them? So they were eating very less processed food. Okay. And when you eat less processed food, you have better gut microbiota. That is mm. your intestine harbors better bacteria, which are capable of producing B12. Now, because you eat so much processed food, 
bacteria are also used to having processed food in the gut and hence they do not make b12 so that is why we see rampant amount of b12 deficiency and therefore taking b12 supplements is very important since we don't have any other questions there's just one last question which is not directly related to our topic but uh, someone is interested in knowing if uh, the lifestyle or nutrition consultation is an emerging branch for career in India. And uh, like, could you just explain how it works in India? So it's a great branch to be in, not because I'm a dietitian. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just that it's a much in demand and it will improve in coming years. So it's a good branch to have. Uh, there are a lot of things that you can do. You can become a dietitian like me. Uh, I do private practice, but you can also become a hospital dietitian who work full-time in hospital. You can become an intensive care dietitian who only work in intensive care. You can join food industry and you can become industry dietitian. You can join schools for their meal programs. Okay, And there is a lot of scope in research as well. There's also a lot of scope in pharma. Because you have these proteins, etc., which becomes pharma, uh, which becomes part of nutraceutical industry. So vitamins, minerals, all of that. So there is a lot of scope. Nice. Well, uh, while you were talking, we have two more questions. Uh, the first is, uh, can you tell us about prebiotics and probiotics and how important are they in your diet? Okay. So this is a the paper I teach for six months in in master's semester. So I'm going to wind it up in four sentences for you. So sure. probiotics are the bacteria, are the uh, gut-friendly bacteria that live in our large intestine, more specifically colon. Okay. So they are symbiotic in nature. They, uh, they live as, uh, you know, we are their host. Mm -hmm. And in return, they provide us a lot of things. Uh, prebiotics are food which are fed for probiotics to grow. So okay. probiotics consume prebiotics and then make B12 mm -hmm. and they make short chain fatty acid, which becomes food for our colonocytes. That is the cells of colon. And therefore their junctions become very tight and we do not get any diseases. So therefore probiotics are symbiotic bacteria that live in our gut and prebiotic is the food that you feed probiotics and probiotics typically like high fiber food and therefore most of your prebiotic supplements are soluble or insoluble fibers and therefore eating vegetables and dals is so important because they become right. food for your probiotics. Right. And the second question we had was uh, there are multiple diet programs like Dixit diet and Devikar diet. Do you have any thoughts on that? What are your thoughts on no, that? No, I don't have thoughts on that. Whatever works for you right. is good. I would say don't go either way. Go to something which is more sensible. You are all scientists here. So go to something which is more sensible that which, which you can explain scientifically. So you don't need to follow anything which cannot be explained scientifically. Beyond that, also look at your personality. Are you able to follow what you are doing lifelong? Do not follow something for three days, six months, eight months. No. That's not diet because definition of diet is way of living. It is not mm -hmm. following something for two, three days. Okay. So look at it long term. Oh, this is something I can live with. This is something I cannot do. So please don't do fasting for two days and feasting for 20 days. It doesn't work like that. So if you are fasting, then fast diligently. If you are not, it's not your cup of tea. Do something else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think we are right on time as well and uh, we have covered all the questions that we had so it was very nice talk summarizing how diet is our way of life and should be a way of life uh, now I'll hand over to uh, Atharva to wrap the session up yeah, yeah. Um, thank you for such a such an interesting and thought provoking session uh, I couldn't stop thinking about the question you posed that do you actually need to eat carbohydrates? Do you actually need to eat roti and rice? Then I thought, like, not really. Uh, the sub-zero didn't taste that good. But then I started to realize the actual problem. 
to cater for the mildness of these carbohydrates, we on purpose made the sabzis spicier or saltier. So we are actually programmed or coded to believe that the carbohydrates are the main heroes of our food. Uh, but like they, they should actually be the supporting characters. So this was actually a decoding. This, this session actually decoded the diet for us. So yeah, with that, this second. I would like to express sincere gratitude to all those who contributed in the success of this session. Uh, special thanks to Sidba Ma'am again for delivering this insightful talk. Uh, appreciation is extended towards the JPF team for providing valuable platform for conducting awareness sessions. We acknowledge the efforts of the project planning committee, JPF social media team, JPF website team, and I'm also grateful for all the team members of JPF Ibrita who have been an absolute delight to work with. A heartfelt thank you to everyone who have joined us here, both on Zoom and YouTube, for your presence and engagement. For those with further questions on the topic, please feel free to reach out to us at biomed at nanprabodhinifoundation.org. Thank you so much.